Okay, that Conversion Nation, Pastor Ray here with Pastor Coquetzo Macafola, a.k.a. Pastor Mac. We just wrapped up week two of That's My Jam. Uh, it's also week two of Sunday Fun Days, and we were representing decades, right? So as you can probably tell, I'm representing the 80s, maybe teetering on to the early 90s. Had a fantastic time. Pastor Coquetzo, Pastor Mac brought a fantastic word from Luke chapter 15. Unpack that for us. Uh, uh, inspiration for that message where did that come from yeah um so the inspiration for the message was really um a personal um struggle for myself mm. and so it is it is one of those things where i personally had to come to the realization at some point in my life that i may be seeking something more or or rather seeking for something else where there was already everything in the father's house. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, wow. fantastic. It was a struggle where I had to realize for myself that I was actually more like the critical older brother. Wow. And, and so God had to work and is still working on me, um, to, to, to kind of work on those things on my heart. And so I felt, well, if I feel this way, how many more people may be going through the same thing. Wow, so powerful. I think it was a timely word. I was challenged by it uh, because I think personally, I, I lose sight of how often I'm uh, like the critical older brother. And even when I come to these moments of realization, um, I don't necessarily want to own it. Right. Where I am. Uh, I mean, just dealing with yourself, right? Sometimes it, it, it's, it's tough. The interesting thing about Luke 15, and I love, I love what you said. In fact, I'm going to use it. I just won't use it here. But what you said about Jesus sort of being the originator of so the sermon series. Man, that's so good. I've never seen that before because in Luke 15, he talks about these three uh, these three parables. Right. And they all speak to, to what? Lost and found. Lost and found. Lost and found. And I think that's brilliant. By the time we get to Luke 15, the story of the prodigal son, a, a lot of times the focus is on uh, the father's compassion, the generosity of the father, right. um, you know, how selfish the son was and how wasteful and prodigal he was. Right. But man, you talked about the critical older brother. I thought uh, that was a, a fresh perspective on that story. Amen. Yeah. Um, and again, it's like you said, I think I've heard that story so many times. Mm -hmm. And even for me personally, it's always, um, and I, I said this to my wife the other day, that even when we pray, mm -hmm. Uh, and we pray for our kids. We say we pray that they wouldn't go out into a far country. Right. Again, the focus really being on the children leaving the house right. or, you know, disowning themselves. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes you don't realize people are hurting right next to you. Right next to you. No, that's so powerful. Um, we we talked a little bit about that at the end of the message. Um, at least when you were when you were preaching there, that this all these light bulb moments were happening for me. Um, um, and you know. One of the things that you talked about was the the, the older brother statement. You know, uh, I'm here. I serve right. you. Um, how 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 important is that is that to you, or or how important do you think it is for people to understand uh, uh, sonship versus uh, servanthood? Yeah. Right, because he he talks about serving his father, but he says nothing about the fact that. I'm your son. Right. Right. Yeah. And that's, 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 that's critically important to me. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's something that had to be pointed out in the story because he is a son, right. but he treats himself as only a servant. Mm -hmm. And I mean, even in the kingdom, it's important to serve, but we have to have the right perspective. Right. That is first and foremost, we are children of the house. Yeah. And we serve because we love, mm -hmm. not because um, basically we, we're looking for something else. Yeah. And, and, and so just having that right heart condition that, mm -hmm. first of all, you are loved. So even if you didn't serve, you would still be loved. 100%. But it's important to do what you can right. to um, help the kingdom. Yes. Yeah. I think one of the lessons, again, to that point, that the story of the, or the parable of the lost son especially as it relates to the critical older brother is that we we don't that we really can't serve our way into God's approval yeah. because we're already loved um I think the second thing is you know I'm here with you all the time and this your son 
you know, shows up and you throw him this big party. Yeah. And I think sometimes the temptation for us is to ask the question, what about me? Uh, the sense that um, someone doing well might displace me. Yeah. Uh, do you think that's maybe commonplace yeah, that people experience that? I, I know I have. Yeah. I, I know I sometimes, even if it's just a fleeting thought, it's like, what about me? Yes. You know, yeah. Do you see me? Yeah, I, I I do think it's commonplace. I think it's quite natural, actually. But I think the important thing is for us to come to remembrance mm. that, and you said it well, everyone has a seat at the table. Mm. And so, and I even talked about this, that ultimately some things, we, we don't all have the same blessing, right? And so, yeah, someone may be blessed with a mention, but it doesn't mean you are less loved if you only have the one bedroom apartment. What? Say that one more time. Someone may be blessed with a mention. Right. But it does not mean that you are less loved or less important to God if you just have the one bedroom apartment. Huge. Yeah. Huge. So it's just bringing... Oh, oh my goodness. That's so good. Final thing, final thing, final thing. You, you emphasized, right, how the father came out and cleaned it with his oldest son, Man. the critical older brother, or the older brother. Right. And he would not come in. I, I think one of the things that just stood out to me as I'm, as I'm listening to you preach this is like, hold up. The father had already forgiven him, fully restored him, and the older brother is still holding on to this offense. Yeah. An offense that the father had forgiven. Any thoughts about the danger, man, of living offended and justifying our offense uh, that's, <laughs> we would stay here all day sorry <laughs> no, give no, us give good. us give us the cliff notes um no it's um it's it's actually so dangerous i i, I believe because it it does more harm to us mm. um and and harms our soul like our soul prosperity suffers mm. when we live with offense especially um and i think you pointed this out especially when the offense wasn't even directly right. to you, right? Like in this situation, it would have been okay for the father to be offended. Right. But because he was already so compassionate, he loved on his son, forgave him, restored him fully, like the other brother just could not understand that. And mm. this goes to show that the whole time his younger brother was gone, he just kept holding on to that offense. Yeah. And, and maybe he had hoped that he wouldn't come back but he was surprised mm. to see just how well he was restored. And so I think it's in our lives personally, it's important one. And that's why I said to forgive mm. ourselves, mm. but man, to never withhold forgiveness from others. It's so powerful, dude. That's listen, doc. I know we're trying to stay within this timeline, but as you're talking at something you said, just triggered another thought, right? Yeah. Because we see the son, the critical older brother, interacting with the dad, unwilling to, to see his older... But what if... You, you, you mentioned the longer his brother was away, maybe the more he sat in that. But I've never, ever considered how his brother leaving impacted him. Mm. Wow, that's good. The closeness, right? Two brothers who may be like best friends right or even closer to best friends and i don't know what the critical older brother how he felt like you're yeah. you're abandoning me to two yeah right yeah. and so maybe the anger is toward him for having left him mm -hmm. because maybe this was the guy i hung out with we did everything together yeah and all of a sudden they decided that wasn't enough he had to go find this somewhere else or right. i never thought about that's that good until you talked about that but that's good i didn't think about yeah, yeah. There's so many layers to the story. Listen, Pastor Mac, we could be here for another 30 minutes, man, and re-preach this message. Yeah. The title of the sermon, though, so powerful. And I'm saying this because I want people to make sure they visit us on our social media platforms, uh, YouTube and Facebook, to watch the message. It should be available there. Uh, but tell us about just the, the title of the message as we close up. Title of the message, simply this lost in the father's house mm. lost in the father's house 
And the beautiful part, as, as I was praying through that, and the title specifically, is um, because it first acknowledges that you are in the house. Yes, sir. Um, but then the flip side is you may be lost and don't even know it. You may be lost and don't even know it. Powerful. Listen, check it out. Lost in the Father's House, Pastor Mac, Pastor Coquetzel. It's available on YouTube, youtube.com slash we are converge. Also, facebook.com, we are converge, available on demand. Thank you for an outstanding, life giving word. Listen, we look forward to seeing you next Sunday for uh, That's My Jam, week three, and Sunday Fun Days, uh, week three. And I think Sunday Fun Days, man, the theme is. Uh, walk in the light, uh, wear something bright. So, man, pull out your most vibrant colors, your brightest colors. Uh, I, for some reason, I keep thinking Miami Vice, man. So, if it's neon, whatever, if it's bright, come with it. It's going to be an awesome time. God bless you. Awesome. We'll see you then. <laughs>